My name is Michael Mark Cohen, and I'm a professor of American Studies at the University of California at Berkeley. And the passage that I brought in to read today is from Karl Marx's Capital, Volume 1, A Critique of Political Economy. It comes from Chapter 10, which is on the working day. And in this passage, Marx introduces the subject of race, class, slavery in the United States of America. In the United States of America, every independent workers' movement was paralyzed as long as slavery disfigured a part of the republic. Labor in a white skin cannot emancipate itself where it is branded in a black skin. Now this is important because Karl Marx wrote extensively about the United States in his journalistic writings, particularly um, about the American Civil War, and followed it quite closely. In the 1850s and 1860s, Marx was an ardent abolitionist, a very radical position for a European intellectual at his time. His commitments to the United States were such that he actually considered moving to the United States in 1857, and as strange as it might imagine to see Karl Marx living in Texas at that time, he seriously considered the possibility. But in his studies of the Civil War, it brought him to the attention of the political economy of slavery in particular, and it was important for Marx to write in this book about how slavery should be understood fundamentally as a labor system, a way of organizing work and workers on the plantation south. Marx recognized fundamentally that the difference between Africans or African Americans and those enslaved in the South and white workers was a difference born of the division of labor and the extraction of surplus value between white workers and black workers, and those, dif those critical differences, not some biological or human difference. Race, to Marx, was a, an outgrowth of the division of labor between free labor and slave labor. In this passage, Marx is writing, publishing in 1867, just a few years after the end of the Civil War and the mass emancipation of American slaves, and in the period of Reconstruction. So Karl Marx is articulating the importance that white workers find common cause with black workers in the South in particular, that wage workers in the North and black workers in the South have the same common cause against capitalist exploitation in the United States, and that white workers in the industrial North will never be able to free themselves if they see themselves and privilege their racial status and see themselves as superior and above their fellow workers, African American workers in the South. Marx understood that the proletariat, the working class, has everything in common even across racial, class, gender, religion, and sexual lines. And in this moment, he seeks to bring everyone together by saying that my freedom is bound up in yours, white workers' liberation is bound up in those of black workers and workers of every kind and color, that none of us are free unless all of us are free. Workers uh, need to understand that no matter what their place in the political economic system, that unless all of us are free, none of us are. And Marx has something to offer us, particularly in the Trump era, to think about this passage in the Trump era, which is to say that that supposed white working class that is embracing racism, that is embracing anti-immigrant xenophobia, that somehow they believe that by prioritizing or privileging their racial identity that they can somehow right, liberate themselves or find a greater piece of the American pie. The Karl Marx and Du Bois and others indicate to us very clearly that that is a lie, that that will never be possible, that American workers of whatever color or persuasion will only be free when all of us are. Thank you and happy birthday, Karl. <laughs>